Today, we're going to be talking about who might climb the next French 9C. And what that 9C might be. Exactly, Zar. And I think the way we're going to approach this, isn't it, by talking a bit about who those contenders are, because each of those people has a kind of potential uh, route that they may have in mind or may have put time into already. Exactly. So we're looking at the climbers who are, based on what they've already done, most likely to be uh, kind of operating at potentially that 9C level. And then we're looking at what they've already invested time in or potentially other routes that might suit them well uh, that other people have invested time in. So we're gonna act as like a 9C matchmaking services. Yeah, maybe they just haven't thought about it. They'll watch this, think actually, yeah, maybe I could climb that. That looks straightforward. And then we'll get loads of credit for it. So starting at the top, None other than Mr. 9C himself. Mr. 9C, the first person to climb 9C, Adam Ondra. So when I was looking at Adam as a potential 9C climber for the second time, I looked at the things that he's already done. Obviously we know 9C silence, he's got four 9B pluses and a 9B plus, 9B slash plus with move um, and then around 29 Bs. So in terms of... You didn't have to think that hard to include <laughs> Adam's name on this list. Exactly right. It's, it's everyone's kind of first first name on the list. Um, so yeah, he's, he's, he's an obvious contender. In terms of the next 9C that he might climb, the, the obvious contender for that would be Project Big. Because we've already seen a load of footage of him trying the route already. He's, he's invested in it and that feels like it's his sort of focus at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. And I also think that in the context of uh, Silence, which obviously was, I think Silence was Project Hard, which ended up being Silence 9C. And in the first video that he released about Project Big, he said that actually he went back to working on silence because Project Big was just too much to comprehend. Silence, so, silence was the easy option. Exactly, it was easier to just, oh, I can't think about that, I'll just go and work silence, which ended up being 9C. So I'd almost be a little bit confused if Project Big ended up being anything other than 9C. It's, it's, it's kind of got all of the, the hallmarks of a 9C and obviously you have Adam who knows what 9C is suggesting that it's, it's, it's a, the harder of the two routes, maybe. Any other nine seeds with Adam's name written over it? What, what matchmaking can we do for him? I'm not sure about other nine seeds that Adam might climb, but some, someone that's worth talking about in this kind of bracket when we talk about Project Big is obviously Jakob Schuber, who's also been investing time into Project Big. And he's a little bit of a curveball in terms of thinking about nine C because as far as I know, he's climbed Perfecto Mundo, which is 9B+. Plus. Um, and then he's climbed a few 9Bs as well. I think he's climbed eight 9Bs. But not to, he, hasn't, he hasn't climbed as much at that 9B+, plus kind of getting towards 9C. Uh, and those he level. has have been repeats as opposed to first ascents. And there is a difference in between yeah. the two there. But he has been spotted, I think, on Project Big yeah. and DNA as well. Seb Bruins, eight... 9C. 9C. 89C. 89Cs. Yeah, so he's he's clearly uh, kind of in the headspace of thinking that 9C is something that he, he feels capable of and that he's obviously putting together really, really good links on um, Project Big. It looks like him and Adam are at relatively similar high points. But like you say, I think he's, he's someone who is less likely to put up a first ascent. But then when you think about Project Big, a lot of the work has actually already been done in terms of working out the moves. From the videos, it looks like him and Adam are very um, kind of good at sharing beta with the, one another. The interesting thing about that footage actually is just how different Adam Ondra and Jakob Schubert are in their style and the way in which they approach it. Hmm. Yeah, it, it looks as though Adam's kind of a one try, two try a day, max sort of sort of guy, and Jakob's able to throw himself at it a little bit more. He just seemed to keep getting on it, and I mean, it's, I guess this is where Wasi may not have climbed the same quantity and the first ascents that Adam has. Let's not forget that Jakob has this competition pedigree. I mean, he's got stamina coming out of his ears. 
he's on the list. That's another thing to think about though, is Jakob has been, so he's been on Project Big, but also we saw him at the IFSC World Cup comps. So him focusing on Boulder World Cup comps is maybe something that might drop him a little bit lower down on the list because he's maybe not in the right headspace for Project Big, which is like we say, a really, really long route. And he's maybe putting more of his training towards short, explosive, bouldery sort of problems. That might have taken him a little bit out of the kind of running for uh, the next 9C. Not to say that he can't come back and dedicate that time towards the longer routes and actually get back in that shape again. It's a bit like Andre, I always used to think, use these competition, you know, the World Cup yeah. series as almost like training blocks. And then he'd come out of those and you know, to the dorm wall or, yeah. you know, whatever it is, you just do anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah um, absolutely. And so it was almost an excuse to get you to really strong or really fit and then he'd come out of the blocks and just, yeah, climb anything. Yeah, it could be the case that it's that boulder strength that Jakob's actually needing for the, the hard boulder problem within uh, Project Big, so you never know. So we've had Adam Ondra, Jakob Schubert, and within those two, you've obviously got Project Big and DNA. Who else next? So speaking of DNA, I think after Adam Ondra, the next person that you look at is likely to be Seb Buan. So he's the only other person to have climbed 9C with DNA, obviously, another problem that, uh, another route, sorry, that Jakob was trying. And if we look at his pedigree in the ninth grade from 9B up, again, probably the most impressive after Adam. Um, so he's got four 9Bs, four 9B slash pluses. He's into a slash grade. He's into, he loves a slash grade. Two 9B pluses and 9C with DNA. And one of the things that I think is worth thinking about with Seb Buan, with, which you see with Supreme Jumbo Love, is that he's not afraid of taking a ridiculously hard route and changing one section of it, maybe an 8C plus section, into a 9A or a 9B and making those really long, really, really hard routes. I mean, the thing as well that's impressed me about Seb has just been the speed and frequency of which he's done these. You think Adam Andre has been around now for a long time. Seb hasn't been around for quite as long, but within the time that he's had, he really boshed it out. And also he's boshed it out, not just in terms of the repeats, but repeats also of routes which don't get repeated, mm -hmm. but also putting those hours into first ascents as well. So I think he, as, as a sort of all round package, mm. He's a very strong contender. He's a really strong contender. Like we said, DNA, first ascent, Supreme Jumbo Love, first ascent. He's also got repeats at 9B+. His recent route ACL, which is either 9B or 9B+, I can't remember. That was a first ascent that he'd kind of looked into and put some time in on and then come back. So he's clearly someone who really does value putting in time on first ascents and kind of opening up these new lines. And like I say, kind of linking things together in ways that maybe no one's ever done before. Question is, what would be the 9C for him? So I've actually thought maybe Project Big could be a contender because he's done quite a lot uh, in Flatanga already. Um, With the, I mean, for me, his Nordic marathon, that like never yeah. ending. I mean, it looks like a multi-pitch. It's, I forgot yeah. how many meters is it? A hundred and... I think it's again, like 120, 140 meters, something like that. And... He, I mean, that for me almost is like, a, that was one of the standout ascents, you know, of the year because yeah. it just looked, I mean, so cool. What a concept. There's, there's a moment at the end of the video where they zoom out and just give you the scale of the route and it's absolutely mind blowing. They had to do all sorts of weird kind of rope work to make sure that he didn't have a hundred kilograms of drag as he was climbing the upper section. But actually that, that links into the other 9C that is a potential route that he might climb, which is Move Integral, which is an even harder variation of the already horrendously hard uh, 9B slash plus Nordic Marathon, um, which, as I said, would replace an 8C intro with uh, Move, which is a 9B slash plus. So you'd be... He'd be comfortable as well because it's slash grade as well. He's yeah. in his element. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe it would be 9B plus slash C. But anyway, so that would be a 9B slash plus route directly into 9A, I think. So you'd suggest that that would probably add up to 9C. Um, and the, that I think unlike most of the 
routes that uh, we'll be talking about, he's actually climbed uh, all of those sections. So he's done move and he's done Nordic marathon. Um, it's the minor detail linking it all together it's, now. It's just linking 9B slash plus into 9A. It's just, he just maybe hasn't thought of it, you know? <laughs> He'll be there watching this video. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> so um, potentially this is a bit of a, maybe not a curveball because he's so obvious an option, but it's Jorge Diaz Ruyo. Mm. Now, I presented the tick list a few months ago and I remember when I was researching at the time, being blown away by yeah. the depth of experience he has in the nines, and yet actually how little I feel like there is about him in the in the British media in particular. But I guess as well that like sort of globally, I don't feel like he is as household a name as some of the people that we have mentioned already. And yet he's not only got that depth of experience, but he's got a nine or potential nine C in his sights with Cafe Colombia. Absolutely, and it it has been surprising to me to kind of find out that he is less of a, of a kind of household name and people aren't as aware of him, uh, even within the kind of climbing world. So earlier this year, he made the first ascent of a route uh, in the Finesse region in Margalef, which was Mejorando la Samfaina. First ascent, uh, 9B plus, and he's got this other project on the side of that called Cafe Colombia, and that he has said is essentially definitely, definitely harder than um, his 9B plus route. So I did an interview with um, Jorge earlier this month and when I asked him to kind of compare the two routes, he said that it's definitely the next step up um, and that when he actually climbed Mejorando la Sanfaina, he'd already tried Cafe Colombia two times that day. Um, and then was able to climb Mejorando Sanfaina. But he said doing the opposite would be absolutely impossible. If you were going to have a go on Cafe Colombia, you cannot try another route beforehand. You have to be in the perfect kind of rested state. The conditions need to be perfect. Um, and he said you have to be fresh and he's never felt anything like it on any other route. So to, to be for it to be that much of a step up from a, pre, uh, a kind of pre-existing 9B plus that he's done, suggests quite strongly that if he can do it, it's 9C. Who else is on the list? So another contender is uh, Stefano Gazolfi. So he's a really strong contender, both in terms of a sense at 9B+, plus, where he has four now, um, and also in terms of first ascents at 9B+. Plus. He's um, got three repeats, Perfecto Mundo, Bibliography and Change, and then his recent first ascent, Excalibur. And that's actually where the, the idea of his potential 9C comes in as well. Because there's the potential, isn't there, for this lower start to Excalibur. Yeah, exactly. And I think it's interesting to think about a 9B plus route. And when you say there's a slightly lower start, it kind of it starts on a boulder as it is. And then Stefano did an interview where he spoke about there being potentially three or four additional moves that you can add. And there's a part of me which thinks, how how much difficulty can you add with three or four moves? And there's another part of me that says, Burden of Dreams is a five move boulder. So, <laughs> so you can add a, a whole world of difficulty into uh, a 9B plus route and make you know bump it up um, that extra grade of difficulty. Has Stefano as well, have we heard much from him in terms of other locations across the globe? I mean, obviously he's been trying Burden of Dreams, which is at the shorter end of the spectrum when we're then talking about flat hanger that's very much known for it being at the longer end of a sort of spectrum. But but Stefano, you know, the interesting thing about hand trying burden is that he's not a sort of self-proclaimed boulder. He made a joke about buying a beanie within one of his videos. Um, and actually that sort of stamina based climbing, the sort of power endurance is his sort of style. Yeah, and that's that's actually I don't know about other areas as as much, but I think that's that's the reason that I've said Excalibur low is a real contender because let's say that you know the the first three or four moves they have to have been really difficult for them to not think oh we'll start the route from that point anyway so if that's an isolated boulder that is a really difficult boulder to then start this 9b plus route which is already very very bouldery 
um, then Stefano's in, you know, the bouldering form of his life. So if he's ever going to add a kind of really, really hard boulder into a pre-existing route, which is already pretty hard and pretty kind of bouldery, this is arguably going to be his, his kind of best time to do it because he's just uh, climbed a really, really hard route in Excalibur 9B+. And he's also in really quite impressive bouldering form. So maybe he is going to be able to link those two together and, and establish a lower start. Another climber as well that um, I guess he shot to prominence after making the first on-site ascent of a 9A, mm. Alex Magos. And obviously Alex's history with 9C is a slightly complex one in that he initially uh, proposed bibliography at 9C um, and then Stefano or Stefano came along, climbed it and suggested it was more likely 9B+, which Alex uh, then agreed um, that that was the case. I think that the interesting thing about Alex is that I think we all think maybe he's capable of climbing 9C uh, and he's, you know, he's got two first uh, ascents at 9B+. Plus. So he's kind of, he is up there, but then also it's difficult to think about the actual routes that he might be able to climb at 9C. I'm not sure what projects he has going on. This is a tricky thing as well. You can't you know, to climb a 9C, not only have you got to have the ability, but you've also got to find a 9C, a suitable project, which is no mean feat. It is a tricky thing to find something that's at that sweet spot because you may find something and it turns out to be far harder and maybe impossible, or you do a Bose and <laughs> you um, find, a, in his case, it was that boulder problem, you know, the, um, you know, potential font 9A turned out to be font 8C, because Niba or Differing Beta basically turned it from being like absolute cutting edge into, well, still pretty cutting edge, but not quite as cutting <laughs> not edge. Not quite as cutting edge. Yeah, so I think that's the interesting thing about Alex is we just don't know what, what there is that he's kind of working on. We don't know if he really has the, the kind of motivation to go out there and try 90s. I think he's been training a lot with the German team nationally, so potentially he's focusing a little bit more on, uh, on comps. Um, who knows, maybe there is something out there that he's been working on, but um, he's slightly different from the other climbers that we've listed in that I don't think he's as strongly aligned with a specific climb that could be 9C. Um, but that's not to say that, you know, there isn't something that he's working on or that there isn't um, something that other people on this list are working on that he could go over and, and get on. He's not on our list, but we just mentioned him. And seeing as pretty much every tick list we present these days has him mentioned within it. But Will Bosey, bear in mind, we were actually chatting about this because I think it's his bio on Instagram still describes himself <laughs> as a sport climber. Yeah, and of course, YouTube, yeah. This feels a little ironic now that he's basically repeated the world's hardest boulder problem. Zzz, he's multiple, <laughs> you know, but, but, um, but it is easy to forget the fact that Will's pedigree while sport climbing yeah. You know, actually, and you know, alongside his bouldering strength and supremacy, does put him in a good position to climb Font 9C. But the issue, once again, is finding the right one. And I know he tried Excalibur, and there were plans to go back and do that. But I think Burden of Dreams obviously overtook, you know, Excalibur in the sort of grand scheme of things. Um, but I, I mean, with Will, I just feel like at the moment, if you let him at something. Yeah. Sky's the limit. It's gonna. Yeah, he's 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 chomping at the bit to climb everything that everything that can be climbed. I think that yeah, it's an interesting point to make about Will. So I know that he uh, absolutely kind of mind blowingly wasn't actually heading out to Finland to climb Burden of Dreams. He was just heading out there to take a look. That was the original plan, and he was intending to go over and try Excalibur. He was almost more psyched for Excalibur than he was for Burden of Dreams. And then uh, during his first trip out there, the weather was a little bit sketchy and he wasn't able to climb on it quite as much as he wanted to. Um, and then he looked at the forecast, saw that um, in Drenna where Excalibur is, it wasn't looking great. So he went to Burden of Dreams instead. Obviously the rest is history. But it does kind of demonstrate that in terms of the whole kind of boulder versus sport debate, where's his focus? 
he's definitely not given up on you know hard sport climbing. It's something that he clearly is is still really really interested in. Potentially more psyched for Excalibur than he is for a lot of other stuff. Um, when we spoke to him, he said that he was hoping to head over um, and try Excalibur. I think was it trying Excalibur or was it going to the US at the end of May? He's doing. I think he is off to the US to potentially yeah. try Megatron because it was better conditions better on that conditions. than it is going to be on Return of a Sleepwalker, I yeah. think. But then again, this is the thing is he's going to come back from that trip into yeah. autumn, you know, hopefully cooling temperatures, and he is going to be on the form of his life. I mean, he's still on the form of his still life. Still on the form of his he's life. He's probably going to be even better than the form he is on at the moment. Um, potentially with a third 9A in the bag. Mm -hmm, potentially. And also, I know that he was out in the US for uh, kind of a training camp once, but he, he said that this was essentially his first climbing trip to the US. I don't think he's necessarily seeing this as a go and try Megatron trip. I think it's like Megatron will be a big part of it, I'm sure, or at least a part of it. But there's a lot out there, and I think that he'll probably be getting on some sport routes as well. So it's, you know, there's there's plenty of contenders out there in terms of what Will might be able to climb. Excalibur's obviously up there because he's already put some time in on that route. But, you know, like we said, the sky's the limit. He's, he's on the form of his life. You wouldn't bet against him climbing most stuff, apart from he did say the, the, the uber stamina routes, the Nordic marathons of the world, he said, don't put me on them. And I think this is your final choice here. This was a bit of a curveball, I think, uh, insofar as it's, it's a little bit old school, but actually kind of plausible. Chris Sharma. Chris Sharma, the man <laughs> who keeps, it's just like he just gets stronger and hunkier the older <laughs> he gets. Yeah, so, you know what, two months ago, three months ago, prior to Sleeping Lion, Chris Sharma probably wouldn't have been on this list. But when he climbed Sleeping Lion, he just shot himself back up to the to the kind of top of the the climbing media, the climbing world, and he's you know established a new nine B plus at the age of is it 40, 45? He's still young. He's still young, sir. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, he gives he gives me hope. But he's climbed Sleeping Lion, um, and that's nine B plus. And the other thing I think about it. That's, that's kind of interesting with Chris Sharma is that he's maybe in a slightly different place to the rest of the climbers that we've got on this list. The 9C in question is Le Blonde, which he has already invested a lot of time into. He knows the moves. It's a local crag. He's not doing as much kind of traveling and searching out of all these routes that other people have done. He's, he's maybe got more of a singular focus than uh, a lot of the other climbers that we've spoken about today. Um, and he's got family based kind of near the crag. So it, he's, he's pretty much got one area that he's really investing his time into. And Le Blonde is maybe what he's going to replace all of that time that he was spending on um, Sleeping Lion. He can now invest into Le Blonde. I know we've chatted about like a bit about greatest of all time, the GOAT, Chris Sharma versus Adam Andre. Come on, where do you stand? It's a difficult one, isn't it? I think, I think if, you, if you think about the influence that someone's had on climbing altogether, it's really, really hard to look past Chris. So Nick, who's currently sat behind the camera and staying quiet, reckoned that Chris, had, he basically pushed it further. Because if you think of the standards pre-Sharma compared to post-Sharma, <laughs> Even though, even though Sharma's still with us, I want to clarify. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, he took things like a long way and that Andra sort of took over from that. And the Dura Dura was that absolutely fascinating... The passing of the torch, The wasn't passing it? of the torch. Yeah. Um, but Andra has almost done that whilst standing off, of the, off of, on the shoulders of giants almost. You know, he's, he's basically moved things on from that point. Mm, I mean, absolutely. I'm kind of, it's not that I'm writing off, I think Chris is incredible. I do think he is the most influential climber of the 21st century. I've just said it. But <laughs> Andre... Does that mean about, the GOAT, though? Does it mean the greatest of all time, if you're the most influential? The thing about Andre that gets me is that 
for me, so obviously you've got silence, you've obviously got his, you know, sort of, I guess his competition background, but also the other thing which does it for me is the dorm wall. That for me oh, is yeah. just, you know, when he did that, I remember reading on, I think it might have been the Super Topo forum at the time, basically when people heard that Andra was going to go over there and just thinking like, this is going to be, just you wait, watch, yeah, yeah, sit yeah. back, watch, and let this Czech climber basically realise, you know, how hard these big walls are. You know, Tommy Caldwell, obviously, like, you know, making that first ascent with Kevin Jorgensen. Tommy is like the big wall guru. Yeah, he has Mr. refined his craft over decades. And the idea that some kid <laughs> had come over and basically climb it was a joke. And then it bloody happened. In eight days and downgraded some of the some of the sections as well. Yeah, I, th I think the thing is, if you're thinking about, it's really difficult, but I, I think that in however many years, when Adam is no longer continuing to operate at this 9B plus 9C level, I think the debate will be less contentious. I think everyone will be saying, Adam is the greatest of all time. But for the meanwhile. But for the meanwhile, I think there's almost this, um, this nostalgia that kind of, um, it means that we want to kind of hold on to, to Chris being the greatest of all time. So it's it's an interesting debate to have, but I do think in, you know, 20, 30 years time, when who knows when Adam's going to stop climbing 9B buses. <laughs> but I do think that everyone's going to say, yeah, Adam was the greatest of all time. I'm just remembering all of Chris Sharma's deep water solo as well. Basically, this doesn't matter, does it? No one cares. They're both brilliant. They're Why both are we brilliant. even having this conversation? Anyway. Yeah. Back to the point, 9C climbers. Who, who do you reckon the next one's gonna be? Next person. I, I think there's two contenders for me. I think that Adam Ondra on Project Big and I think Jorge Diaz Royo on Cafe Colombia. I really, really get the strong sense that um, uh, Jorge Diaz Royo has got the the bit between his teeth. He's not going to give up until he comes. <laughs> when I asked you what your impression was from when you interviewed him, you just said he's psyched. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's proper psyched for it. It's like you can tell that that is that's just on his mind. He's he's also uh, so he's actually in Seuss working on bibliography at the moment to kind of it's broaden nice... his experience at nine B plus before he goes back for the nine C. It's a nice rest day activity, isn't it? Yeah, friend? exactly. So I think that in terms of the two contenders, I know that he is, he's just got the bit between his teeth. He's not going to let go until he's done it. He's invested 120 days into it already over three seasons. It's, I feel like it's not a case of if with that route. It's a case of when. Um, but it might not be you know, this year. It might not be but next year. It might still, not be the year after. He's still really young as well, though, isn't he? Yeah, he's 24 years old. Um, and I think that, you know, in a few years' time, he won't be a, a kind of a little bit of a curveball or an outsider. I think we'll be talking of him as like one of the, the kind of top dogs of the sport climbing game. And you reckon Andra over Jakob for Project Big? Yeah, just because of some of the stuff that we spoke about with Jakob dedicating a bit more time to, to World Cup bouldering um, and then presumably. Uh, the lead side of the World Cups as well. And Adam, just that, that breadth of experience at 9B and above with circa 30 routes at 9B and above, he's come really, really close to getting through that uh, crux section on Project Big. So it would be, it's not exactly a, a, a kind of a headline that he's one of the top two for, for kind of the next 9C route. But I do think that even when you kind of try and think of it as rationally as possible, it does make sense that he's up there. Well, uh, Zah, I look forward to revisiting uh, this <laughs> film and some of these predictions a little later on, hopefully this year, because I want to see these routes done. It's super inspiring. And seeing how right or wrong we were and whether or not the next 9C is indeed done by any of the people on this list or is actually any of the routes that we have listed. Yeah. Because it, it might not be. It's going to be interesting to see. I mean, there's, you never know, you never know. So it'll be interesting to come back and see in future tick lists when we report, can we insert clip here? We said it might happen or it will just be, we didn't mention it at all. <laughs> Sweep it under the car. Yeah, 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 absolutely. <laughs> 
Thanks to Nathaniel Soon for the inspirational behind today's talk, and thanks once again to Zah for holding the thing together.